Elizabeth Ann Holmes is an American former biotechnology entrepreneur convicted of criminal fraud. In 2003, Holmes founded and was the chief executive officer of the ANOS, a now defunct health technology company that soared in valuation after the company claimed to have revolutionized blood testing by developing methods that could use surprisingly small volumes of blood, such as from a finger prick. By 2015, Forbes had named Holmes the youngest and wealthiest self-made female billionaire in America on the basis of a $9 billion valuation of her company. In the following year, as revelations of potential fraud about Theranos's claims began to surface, Forbes revised its estimate of Holmes's net worth to zero, and Fortune named her in its feature article on the world's 19 most disappointing leaders. The decline of the ANOS began in 2015 when a series of journalistic and regulatory investigations revealed doubts about the company's technology claims and whether Holmes had misled investors and the government. In 2018, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission charged the ANOS and Holmes with deceiving investors by massive fraud through false or exaggerated claims about the accuracy of the company's blood testing technology. Holmes settled the charges by paying a $500,000 fine returning 18.9 million shares to the company, relinquishing her voting control of the ANOS, and accepting a 10-year ban from serving as an officer or director of a public company. In June 2018, a federal grand jury indicted Holmes and former the ANOS chief operating officer Ramesh Sunny Balwani on nine counts of wire fraud and two counts of conspiracy to commit wire fraud, with the victims being investors and patients. Her trial in the case of U.S. v. Holmes, ETAL ended in January 2022 when Holmes was convicted of defrauding investors, and found not guilty of defrauding patients. She faces up to 20 years in federal prison, plus potentially millions in restitution and fines, and is scheduled to be sentenced in November 2022. The credibility of the ANOS was attributed in part to Holmes's personal connections and ability to recruit the support of influential people, including Henry Kissinger, George Schultz, Jim Mattis, and Betsy DeVos, all of whom had served or would go on to serve as U.S. presidential cabinet officials. Holmes was in a clandestine romantic relationship with Balwani during most of Theranos's history. Following the collapse of the ANOS, she started dating hotel heir Billy Evans, with whom she had a son in 2021. Holmes's career, the rise and dissolution of her company, and the subsequent fallout are the subject of a book, Bad Blood, Secrets and Lies in a Silicon Valley Startup, by the Wall Street Journal reporter John Carrero, an HBO documentary feature film, The Inventor, Out for Blood in Silicon Valley, and a Hulu miniseries called The Dropout. Early Life and Education Ramesh Balwani was born in Sindh, Pakistan into an upper-middle-class Sindhi Hindu farming family. He attended Atchison College, a prestigious boarding school in Lahore. He stayed there until 1984, receiving an education the British colonialists had designated for youths of good family. Balwani speaks Urdu, Hindi, and English. His family eventually moved to India because being a Hindu in a mostly all Muslim country of Pakistan was very difficult, according to Balwani's personal lawyer. Later, they immigrated to the United States. In the spring 1987 semester, Balwani began undergraduate studies at the University of Texas at Austin as an international student, where he was a member of the Pakistani Students Association. He was very patriotically Pakistani, said one friend of Balwani's at the time, he was one of us. Balwani left the campus sometime after 1991 to begin working, he would eventually complete a degree, but not until 1997 with a bachelor's in information systems. Despite research into the question by the New York Times, it is unknown when, or why, he took the nickname Sonny. In official documents from the late 1990s, and on divorce papers from 2002, he was known as Ramesh, his given name. By 2012, he was signing papers at the ANOS as Sunny Balwani. 
career. In the 1990s, Balwani worked for Lotus Software and Microsoft. During Balwani's tenure at Microsoft he worked in sales. He claims to have written thousands of lines of code, however, independent investigations could not verify this, and numerous Microsoft managers who were asked about him could not remember him. While at Microsoft, he met a Japanese artist, Keiko Fujimoto, who became his wife. In late 1999, he joined CommerceBid.com as president. It was a software development company that helped businesses buy and sell items via auctions over the burgeoning Internet. In 1999, the company was purchased by Commerce One, another business development software company with a high valuation. The buyout was done entirely with stock, and Balwani joined the board of the new company. In July 2000, Balwani sold his shares in Commerce One, netting nearly $40 million shortly before the company went out of business, just before the dot-com bubble burst. He later went back to school and received a Master of Business Administration from the University of California, Berkeley in 2003. He spent another four years in a computer science graduate program at Stanford University, but dropped out in 2008. While enrolled at Berkeley, Balwani, who was 37 at the time, met Elizabeth Holmes, who was 18 and in her senior year of high school. Holmes pursued an undergraduate degree in chemical engineering at Stanford, but later dropped out to focus full time on their ANOS. Their ANOS. Balwani joined their ANOS in 2009. He ran the company's day to day operations as its president. He had no training in biological sciences or medical devices, which became an issue due to the absence of medical experts on the company's board of directors and Balwani's behavior. He was described by former The ANOS employees as overbearing, uncompromising, and so concerned about industrial espionage that he verged on paranoia. Within The ANOS, Balwani was known for using technical terms he seemingly did not understand and what others believed were attempts to appear more knowledgeable. Balwani at one point claimed this invention is going to be way up there, um, with, with the discovery of antibiotics. He once misheard end effector as endo factor and repeated the error throughout a meeting, furthermore not noticing when endo factor was subsequently used as a prank in a PowerPoint presentation. The Wall Street Journal reported in October 2015 that the Edison blood testing device by the ANOS produced inaccurate medical diagnoses and results. Edison machines frequently failed quality control checks and produced widely varying results a finding that was corroborated in a report released in March 2016 by the Federal Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. In April 2016, the ANOS told regulators it had voided all test results from Edison machines for 2014 and 2015, as well as some other tests it ran on conventional machines. In January 2016, the CMS sent a warning letter to the ANOS after inspecting its Newark, California, laboratory. CMS regulators proposed a two-year ban on Balwani from owning or operating a blood lab after the company had not fixed problems within its California lab in March 2016. The other charges of fraud against the ANOS include claiming the company's technology was being used by the U.S. Department of Defense in combat situations despite never having been used. Another false claim included claiming a $100 million revenue stream in 2014 that was actually $100,000. Balwani departed from his position at the ANOS in May 2016. Legal Proceedings SEC Fraud Charges In March 2018, Balwani and Holmes were charged by the SEC with securities fraud, raising more than $700 million from investors through an elaborate years-long fraud in which they exaggerated or made false statements about the company's technology, business, and financial performance. Holmes settled the case out of court without admitting or denying wrongdoing, but Balwani is still in litigation as of 2022. He says he is innocent of the charges.